Hey guys, it's John. Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Hey! Welcome guys to another installment from Desert Octane. Hey guys, what's going on? Hey. You know, what are you doing wearing sunglasses? It's nighttime. Well, you know, I got the email for the script today, and I heard this install is going to be pretty lit. Do you get it? Do you get it? Pretty lit, that's what the kids say nowadays. Here, you know what? We're just going to... Oh, sweet. So today what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be installing my 52 inch curved light bar. With it's not the, compensated? No, not at all. Not for anything. Just, you know, a little bit. A little bit. With the rough country um, brackets for the F-250 from 11 to 16. Um, so this is actually off my F-150 and so is I actually already got the bracket and installed the lower 22 inch light bar for the F-250. Now I do have to be careful though because I do have a warranty on this. Yes, for those of you that are asking how I had to use the warranty. You've had to use it twice, haven't you? I have. So <laughs> at 22,000 miles, my deaf heater went out and thankfully I had a warranty because otherwise that would have been $7,000 out of my pocket. You know what's really nice that Ford did to help out all the people that bought Ford is they went ahead and circled the problem Right there. Good yeah. job, Ford. You, you know what else they did? If you look, right there. <laughs> they give you a light so that when you have problems, you don't have to hold a flashlight in your mouth or have your children come out and hold it for you. Oh, Chevy drivers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyways, today we're gonna be doing um, an install and I do, like I said, I do have to be careful because I do have a warranty on it. So I've gotta be very careful as to what I'm wiring into. Um, at this point, I don't actually have the switches that I'm going to be ordering. I am going to order the F250, F350 um, auxiliary switches that plug into where the, some have a coin slot, some have just a blank slate, and we'll show you a little bit more of that in the video. But I'm also going to get the pigtail that plugs directly into those auxiliary ports, and then I'm going to splice into them from there so that I can actually have everything wired up correctly, and that way I'm not tapping into anything else so I don't void my warranty. All right, guys, well, let's get going. You're gonna start off and make sure that you have your drill so that you can drill in and start a hole for your rivets. You're gonna need the 3 16 rivets, which actually come with the Rough Country kit for the F-250s. You're gonna need an eight millimeter wrench. That way you can take the cables off the battery before starting. You're gonna need some butt connectors. I usually get the heat shrink ones, so that way I don't have to buy the heat shrink and the butt connectors. I can just automatically heat shrink these when I'm done. In order to heat shrink these, you need either a lighter, a heat gun, or some sort of hot thing. What about myself and my steaming personality? No. On to the next thing. You're gonna need your wire, positive and negative. If you like to color code like I do, you can color code. If not, one roll of wire would be just fine. I usually get about 40 feet of it. You're also gonna need a rivet gun. In order to cut and crimp those wires, you're going to need strippers and crimpers. I love strippers. Other than that, oh, also you're going to need a tape measure in order to make sure that you have the right length from the base of the windshield to the 22 and a half, I believe it is, inches. I'll clarify that for you here shortly. Um, to make sure that the, wind, the light bar is in the proper position so that you're not getting reflection off the top of your hood, but you're also getting the distance that you need from the light bar. Let's get it. All right, so first what we're doing is we're taking off the battery cables. This way we're making sure that when we're connecting our things, we're not gonna short anything out in the ECM or blow a fuse or anything like that. Now John, how many batteries does your vehicle currently carry? Two batteries, one for auxiliary and one for power to the truck. Oh man, so you can get the mad base going, yes? Yes. 
Okay, so what we're doing here is we're actually gonna remove this weather stripping here so that we can get inside and access the pillar. That way we can measure out from the bottom of the tab for the weather stripping, 22 and a quarter inches, not 22 and a half, 22 and a quarter inches up. So that way we can mark it before we start drilling. Always remember, measure twice, cut once. Mm, for the dart, we just cut. We didn't even measure. And look how that turned out. Magnificent. <laughs> You know, John, while we're getting into this, um, I think I need to express my opinion on light bars. For the people who don't know at home, I'm really not a fan Angel of this mod light bars. whatsoever. Like, I can understand it. I mean, mind you, this is on a truck, which, you know, is a little bit more acceptable. But at the same time, it's just... You see them on sedans, you see them on just regular street cars. I don't understand what people are doing with them. And this is the nice thing about having friends who do work on cars because this is a mod that I would never even consider doing on mine, even though John would like it to be on the dart. I'd like to see one somewhere. How about I just shove it up your ass instead? I'm not into that kind of thing. Don't you want that camera? But. <laughs> Back to what I was saying though. Uh, this is one of just one of those things that's nice because I'm still gonna learn from it and who knows, maybe I can figure out, maybe not necessarily a light bar, but just more electrical stuff. This is why you gotta get friends who are into different things. You don't wanna have friends who are all in the same stuff. Like it's boring super fast. So um, as much as I hate light bars, I mean, we're, a light bar install. we're doing a light bar install, so. Uh, it is what it is. Someone out there, plenty of people actually out there do like them, so, yay. Now, it might help. I like standing on the inside of my truck, but that being said, I'm also doing this in a very small space, so I don't really have much room for a step stool. If your truck's a little higher and you can't really get to it from the ground where you need to measure, get a step stool and make sure to use all four points. Don't stand on the top, please. It's not safe. I know. There's your safety message for the day, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you can hold that right there for me, please. Yeah, I guess. How you doing? Right. Yeah. Should feel Just, it catch on the edge here. Yeah, that felt like really catch. Good luck for you, John. <laughs> Is that Scandinavian gear speaking, my dude? I don't know why I got home. Craig isn't working on the floor, it's already broken. Ooh, it smells, John. It smells really good. Okay, guys, so. As you can see, the rivets are sticking out. It's gonna look a little weird. That's the reason we got this. So what I had to do is each size is actually, a, or each nipple is a different size. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I mean, I did there. I mean. <laughs> nipples. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, each nipple is a different size. <laughs> You're gonna have to change it to the corresponding size for whatever size rivet you might be using. Uh, you're gonna stick the head of the rivet in the hole that you just drilled. And then you're gonna take it, you're gonna slide it on. Now I always start in the middle, so that way it's not pulling the bracket one way or the other, and then I can go from the work my way out. So you're gonna press it in, make sure that it's pressed nice and firm. You're gonna squeeze once, and then you're gonna push it in, and you're gonna squeeze again. 
break it off. Oh, so you actually break it off. There we go. Are you applying on this? Like, is this something that you gotta, you know, kind of put your back into it? Yeah, you want to press it as firm as you can, so that when you're pressing the rivet in, you don't have any space between the rivet and the surface of the bracket. Well, that's doggone clean, sir. So, because I broke the tip off this one, I'm just gonna have to either grind or cut this tip off in order to get a flush mating surface. And then I can put my rudder stripping back on and we can move on to the next one. Wonderful. Where's it John? Right there. So like I said before, measure twice, cut once. You're necessarily, you're not cutting, you're drilling, though. Same concept. Is it, though? Like, if I told someone to cut me a slice of cheese and he just drilled a hole in it? Mm. I didn't say same thing, I said the same concept. But it's not the same concept. It is. No, it's not. You two, we want to know. Is it the same concept? Yes or no? Comment below. And if you comment below, John will eat a ghost pepper chip. I never said I would. No, he said it. My name's John. I'll eat a ghost pepper one if you call me. Oh, okay, John. He's very green. People at home know you should probably be wearing eyewear. Probably.
grab it. Grab it. Come on, reach. I'm not reaching. Drink the milk. Yeah, make sure you keep your mouth closed, John. Yeah. What a day. You know, in all reality, though, um, people who do actually know me do know that I do have a soft spot for four trucks specifically. Like, as diehard as a Dodge fan as I am, if I was given the choice between, you know, a Power Stroke or a Cummins, I would probably go with the Power Stroke. Ooh, I don't know about that. If it's one of the newer ones, these ones have just held up. Like, I've seen these, like, just outperform so much. And it's one of the big things that I've always made a point to when people are interested in buying trucks. I always say, you know, hey, take a look. See what brand of truck you see that's actually doing work. Mind you, Dodge isn't bad. Chevy's not bad with their diesels either. That Duramax is solid. But the ones I always see doing work are Fords. You know, I see, I see more Cummins than I do Fords. I see more Fords. Freaking, there was one day I saw a Ford pulling a helicopter, like towing a helicopter. It's kind of nuts. Mind you, I don't know how heavy a helicopter is, but I'm pretty sure a Honda Ridgeline can't haul it. If I had the money to afford a gun, I probably would have bought a gun. Would you though? Now, when it goes for like interior styling, Ford all the way. Except for their sink, currently. Yeah. <laughs> and your Mustang, it was solid, yeah, right? Yeah, but, uh, uh, not so much. Almost like you connect where it's like you're kind of just rolling dice and hoping for the best. Oh, uh, no, not that bad. Oh, you can ask kind of shoddy. It's, 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 it's not price. It's not price for profit. You're right. I mean, there is a lot of chrome on this truck, though. It's getting it. Do you plan to delete the chrome? Delete the chrome or repaint it or remove it altogether? Um, yeah, eventually. Um, I have plans that I'm actually looking at. I really like the work truck front ends that are all black. I don't really like the chrome particularly. Um, there are a couple different front ends out there that I do, I do like better than the standard um, XLT front ends. So we'll see. It's just a matter of time and money. Story of anything car related, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next you're going to go ahead and need to uh, team lift. Oh, man, it's ain't meant for short people. All right, if you want to get in, I will go for sure. I'm at like 6'11", so it shows you how tall this truck is. All right, you got it? Yep. I should have probably given me a screw too. Oh, do I need to wash it off? Come on, you need to tell the people what we're doing. I need to remove mine from the hole. So, my smart self. Well, I gotta put my nut down. Took the bolts off a couple weeks ago when I was starting the prep for this project. Don't remember where I put them. So for now, I'm going to use some bolts that I have that will fit, but are just a tad too long. But we are going to use some washers. How many did I give you? Maybe you give me three. Three. Uh, we're going to use some washers to try and even things out until I can go and get the correct size and do this the proper way. So make sure you have all your stuff. Those are your Alright, I'm just sliding the, the washers right over the 
nut correct and then just screwing it in. And this reminds me of when I was in the Boy Scouts. Yeah, for the most part, it's not tight, but it's in. I'm doing my ex-girlfriend. Wow. You know, as big as this looks when it's not installed, it actually fits really well. And I feel really bad because I was just putting all, I was just holding it on with this bracket. But that shows you how well those rivets are holding on is I can just, I'm just hanging on. John, are you gonna whistle as well? So, I actually have the sound deadeners, or some sound deadeners that I'm gonna slide onto the back of this to make sure that I don't get that notorious whistle from the light bar. And people think you have a whipple, but really you just have a light bar. Now, we're just gonna tighten it up to get it set, and then we can go back later and adjust to make sure we're at the right height so we're not getting any glare off the top. Turn the light bar on. Yeah, that is a big thing. I've been in trucks where they did not angle it correctly, and it is just overly blinding, and it gets very, very annoying. Hi, John. Hey, I am going to be up on 50 correctly. Eventually. Okay, that's pretty tight on there. It's tight on me. Oh! It's going to shift. You sure, as size as I can, because I, yeah. you know, I'm 220 pounds of Puerto Rican. Hey, it's only 20 pounds more than my Irish. What's your Irish name, though? What would be your Irish name? That's pretty good. So while John's tightening things, we do want to give a special appreciation to all of you, the viewers, for your continuous support and feedback, and those random guys who comment on videos from three years ago saying that my inventor sounded like shit. We appreciate you. All of you. All right. Now, what I was smart enough to do on my previous install when I had this on my F-150. Remember those quick disconnects? It makes it so much easier when you're doing the install and removing it where you can place it on the new truck, i.e. my F-350. Next year, he'll get an F-350. I don't know how to go that far. I'm not going to lie, I do like it. It does bring the truck together. I think you just need some pods on the side and you're good. I don't know take on a zombie apocalypse. Well, eventually what I'd like to do is do the OEM install for the uh, LED pods that the F-250 does come with stock from factory. So I can actually go ahead and I'll be able to switch my gauge out so that I have the correct and proper gauge for the fog lights. I might have to insert a fuse into the fuse box in order to make it work properly. But that way I'm not voiding my warranty and I can do everything so that it looks normal and it looks clean. All right guys, welcome to day two. Uh, we stopped what we were doing uh, kind of short the other night. Both of us had to work in the morning, which is why we need you to subscribe. Like right now, like, like right now, take like just a minute. Pause this video, go down. No, you don't have to pause. The subscription button's right there at the bottom right. It's red if you haven't subscribed yet. Just smash that, and if you've done it, comment it below. And when we hit a thousand subscribers, we'll be doing a really special drawing probably for like a hundred dollar gift card. So stay tuned for that. All right. So um, the other day I said that I was, I didn't have the uh, auxiliary switch, the outfitter switch for the F250. I was able to go ahead and get that along with the wiring harness. 
I did also get some other goodies. I was talking about how I wanted to do the fogs. Well, I got the fogs. So now I'm gonna go ahead and- I'm Wait, when there's fog, what better thing do you need than? Fog lights! There it is. There it is. But I mean, we don't really get fog. Yeah, but it just looks cool. But I mean, I mean today, let's see, it's gonna be 90 degrees, guys. That's that's what it is right now, a high that's of 99. That's Fahrenheit for and, International. And uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a hot one. So we've got two little mini fans going to try and keep us cool today. Um, but it's gonna be a fun day today. We're gonna try and get them knock the stone out of the park and get those up fretter switches installed, uh, finish installing the harness. So I'm gonna have to pull the dash apart and then uh, do the fogs and, and get this thing rolling so that we can have some uh, lights by the end of tonight. I think something we do need to tell the people. Uh, remember just a, maybe a minute or two ago, we were talking about when you install those mounts and in case the glass breaks. John, how about you tell us what happened? So this guy right here jinxed me and um, on my way to work the next morning after I uh, put my light bar on, I heard a nice little... That was very deep. That was, you should probably yeah. check out your uh, <laughs> windshield there. It shouldn't be hollow. But yeah, I heard something and said, okay, well, I'm looking around the windshield. I didn't see anything. Went into work and uh, at the end of the day, I came out and took my sunshade off. You need those in Arizona because otherwise it keeps your car really, really hot if you don't have one. And when I took it off, I noticed that I have a nice little chip about two inches underneath my uh, light bar and it cracked all the way down from the crack or to the chip to the rear view mirror. And now, yesterday, because of how hot it's getting, has made another crack and is now going towards the outside of the window. So I'm going to actually go ahead and I have to remove my light bar so that I can get my windshield replaced, um, which is going to be really, really fun. But that'll be later down, down the road. And for people who don't understand with Arizona, so Arizona is one of the very few states along, I think there's two other states, and I know this because I used to work insurance. Uh, Arizona is one of the very few states that insurance companies actually offer a zero deductible to get your windshield replaced because it happens a little too frequently. Uh, personally, when I had my Dodge Avenger, I replaced the windshield, I think three or four times in the course of two months. That's a lot. Yeah, and um, I've replaced, let's see, my Mustang has had... Doesn't it still have I, a crack on it? I, it does, I actually have to get it replaced, <laughs> but I will be going on my sixth windshield and I've had that car for six years. So about a windshield every year. Yeah, so, you know, if you're thinking about moving to Arizona, make sure to talk to your insurance so you don't have to worry sure about a deductible. That, get that glass coverage, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, let's go ahead and get this going again. People want to see some lights? Lighten up their day. Lights, camera, action. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, just know Ziploc baggies are your friends when you're taking off screws to make sure you don't lose them. You know, always want to label the bags so that you know where they go. So if you have a Sharpie, I'm going to go ahead and put these in here and then I'm going to label this fog light bolts so that I know where these go when I go to put things back together. That's called being organized. Yes, it is. Even though we tend to always use less than when we take off. Yeah, um, okay. It's day three, and John is still unscrewing the first puzzle. Oh, so easy, I can do it in my sleep. I didn't know your ex-girlfriend was here. Oh, that's one out. <sighs> now hang on, is that the correct one before yes. you go through all the trouble? screwing that in. So as we can see here, it says RH for right hand. How about we lift it up? So you know what, this is actually the wrong one, you know why? Because that is right hand, which is the passenger. Right. Because so, mechanically... For those ahead. of you who don't know, when you are referring to the right hand or left hand side of the vehicle, you're going to refer to that as being in the car. So when you say the right hand side of the car, it's as if you were sitting behind the driver's side, that's gonna be your passenger side. If you're sitting and you say left hand, that's gonna be the driver's side. So I was about to try and put this right hand side bezel 
in the left hand side where I need it to go. It's a good thing Angel said something. Yes, it is, because it would not have fit. And so you would be fighting with it, like why won't this go in? Yep. And then you would have broken out the grinder. I don't know if I would have gone that far yet. I know you are messing with the genuine four parts. This isn't like so, stuff. Yeah, if it was a you know more of a universal thing, you might be right. I'd probably take the grinder out and figure out a way to make it fit. First on race day, that's what it smells like. Oh, I thought it smelled more like fix or repair daily. No, it's usually found on road dead, and usually when you find it on the road dead, if you reverse it, the driver returns on foot. <laughs> I haven't heard that last one, actually. <laughs> one of my favorites. And see, that's a good part on there, is we're okay with like knocking on our own brands. How many transmission jokes do I make about the Hodges? Yeah, a lot. Go. There's a sticker right on the other side. This one's right hand. This one's left hand. Put this in first. No, okay, so we're gonna have to go. I don't know if that's gonna be. Go that way, there we go. Make it a little bit easier than trying to have to wiggle it around everything in there. Bam. Oh, uh, that's nice. Now to. To put a hose right here and have it go directly into your intake. <laughs> Uh, no, this is not a dot thing. This is a board thing. Okay. So we're gonna have to pull this out real quick. Now because the bracket to the subframe itself sits so close to the front of the bumper, I'm gonna have to put the light in through this hole in order to make it fit, if I can, there we go. And then figure out a way to maneuver it like so. There we go. All right, Angel, if you come back over here and you can get through here, you will see where my finger's coming up through here. There is a little guide, and that guide is going to sit right inside that hole. Sorry, I'm going to get in the way here for a minute. Once that guide is seated, that'll position the light where it needs to be, and then I can go ahead and put the bracket in now to make sure that this thing fits. Now this is going to be a little tricky because I've already got the light in there, and I've got very little room to work. We will figure out a way. I really hope it's not going to be one of those. We have to remove the entire bumper to install this. Eh. If it is. No. <laughs> it was a pain in the ass enough to go ahead and yeah, take it off your F-150 when you had that. Let's Actually, see. taking it off wasn't the issue. It was putting it back on. Let's see if we can move the light temporarily out of the way for a moment. And have enough room. Sorry to go ahead and get this inside. Now I'm trying to not break my brand new Ford part. Built Ford tough though. <laughs> a child can break it. And we have Lift off. 
Now on the light as well, you will have seen, and I will show you on the passenger side, there were four guides for the bracket on the light itself. There we go. And pull off. Oh, that looks super nice. Now. I thought there was a gap, but then I just realized it's actually the chrome piece right there. Yep. So we're gonna start by getting these hand threaded in. Now this is going to be a little bit tighter because of the fact that there is now a light there and not too much space behind it. So for those of you who don't have scrawny little hands or scrawny little fingers, Find yourself a friend that does. Should we call Rosie? Rosie might be able to do this. But because I have those scrawny hands and long fingers, I can get up behind there and in between. And really get those nuts tightened down. Yes, sir. Trying to find the hole. Follow the bubbles. I've heard that leads to holes. Or if you have shy line booth. Oh man, that's what I'm gonna name this bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow the whole project, the shy line booth project. Just do it! The panga! No, wait, that's not. You know, I wow. didn't know that that wasn't shy buff. Really? I thought it was, and then I realized that Shallow Buff was actually on Even Stevens, which realistically, I actually hate that show a lot. Really? The Even Stevens? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I was more of a Malcolm in the Middle guy. I hated that show too. I loved it. I thought it was hysterical. Mainly because I was the older brother, and I could relate to that. Ladies and gentlemen, let us know in the comments below, once again, because apparently we're asking for a full paragraph. Were you more even Stevens, Malcolm in the Middle, or the true pinnacle of teenage drama when growing up from the 90s? Were you Boy Meets World? Let us know oh. in the comments below. So guys, this is gonna take a while, so you might wanna check back in about five years or so and see where I'm at with this bolt. All right guys, so now what we're gonna do, we've got the fogs installed. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the harness for the upfitter switches. Now this is gonna be our relay box for the upfitter switches so that we make sure that we're not drawing direct power from the battery and we have an on and an off switch. Um, we're not gonna have a constant draw. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna peel back this weather stripping. Okay, and then we're gonna get behind here and we're gonna pull this out. Make sure you use a pry tool or a flathead, something that's not gonna ruin your interior. All right, and then this little bracket right here is actually gonna attach inside here, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, I was able to get the upfitter switch, which is going to be right in here. It's all the way back already. Right? It's gonna be this guy right here. So we have one, two, three, four auxiliary switches and it fits right into, I usually used to have a coin holder there. Um, but then we realized it's not 1979 anymore. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we pulled that out. I put this in just to make sure it fits and it actually looks really clean. I'm really happy for it. Uh, that way I'm not drilling in my dash. Um, so once we get that in, or once we get that, we'll get that pulled back out so we can install the switch, which we'll plug in right here. And we've got our ground. And then there is another cable that's actually up underneath the dash that I'll be pulling out here shortly that's gonna plug right into this that goes to the ECM.
be doing is I'm gonna be taking this. We've shoved the camera up in there. We'll see if we can see it from where we were recording. And if we can, we'll circle it for you or hopefully figure out a way to identify it. Regardless, there's um, a gray plug. That's there's a gray plug that this is gonna plug into. So that way I have my power to my uh, relay box. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're staying out of the way of your pedals as well as your steering wheel and make sure that you're not gonna be in interfering with any of those things. So we're gonna go up over the steering column and up over the pedal switch. We're modifying, John. Well, you're not really supposed to, but modifying the bracket where the screw goes because it will be easier to access from above rather than trying to come up through all the harnesses and crap below. Because we have access to this side right here where I can stick my hand in and be able to fit the bolt that I need to fit inside here in order to hold it in place rather than trying to come up through no room right here. Let's do this. That'll fit. John, are we putting the very first zip tie in this whole project? I don't recommend doing this at home. However, because I don't feel like really running out to go grab two bolts, we're gonna use zip ties. Now this is not a permanent solution. Eventually I will get some bolts in there to actually hold it down properly. But for now, so that I can get going on the project, we're going to use zip ties. Now the truck's JDM. Now it's easier to come from underneath to install this rather than to try and fit this through the side as I have this relay box here as well as the air vent here. Now if you look inside, you'll be able to see the bracket or the flip piece that I did. And then you'll see the hole for the bracket up top there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that up and then I'm gonna zip tie it to hold it into place for now. And just let the people know at home, I mean zip ties are terrible. They're not, but they don't hold and eventually if they do come loose or brittle or break then you're going to have a bunch of rattling and that's just going to get annoying. But we are indoor, like this is going to be inside where it won't be really exposed too much to the elements. And there goes that zip pocket. Another one bites the dust. And we're going to get a little ingenuity here. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you do the PE coach pose while you're doing this. Expelliarmus? Is that the is that the spell? The flashlight one? No. Rumo. What was that? Fuck off. What? I'm sorry. It sounds like there's something in your mouth.
Hello all. I want to go get food. John continued to keep working. Did he break it? Is it all done? Did John forget to record everything that he did? Let's find out. John. What's up guys? Hey, so I haven't done much, but what I did do, I forgot to record. But anyways, um, the last thing that we were recording was trying to get the ECM connected. I was able to get the ECM connected. I got my ground attached down here on the underside, which we'll show you in just a moment. And then the tricky part was trying to run my connector switch or my connector so that I could connect my auxiliary switches. Um, what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to remove this little piece down here, run it up through the back side, and then around the AC to come up and through there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead, connect this to the back of the switch. Angel's getting a phone call. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is Anthony. Hey, right. Anthony. Hey, man, what's up to? Uh, we are currently recording. Say hello to the U-Balls. Hello, U-Balls. Actually, better yet, let's do this. Oh, there he is. Uh, what's up? What's up? What's up, dude? What are you guys up to? We're doing a light bar installation. And auxiliary ports, upfitter switches. Oh, you're hooking up the switches today. Yeah. So I've got my uh, switches hooked up and connected, and now I just need to push my switches back into my dash. And they are connected and ready to go. Now I just gotta wire everything up. Nice. Poor I thought he was just frozen for I know. a second. <laughs> so now we're doing that. I got for you guys too. Yeah. Should I pause the camera? No. Okay. This can be announced. So I ordered my high pressure ball, but that's on its way. And I ordered more tunes. Uh oh. Like some mad bass? Some jazzy jazz? The new Moog, you know. I got you. <laughs> so, we're gonna be shooting for some big horsepower on the truck and then I can do the update on it. Oh yeah. Giggity giggity, bruh. Thank you. Okay guys, so now we're at the point of wiring. So, what I've done is I've actually run the wires from my 22 inch bar down here at the bottom. I'd run the wires up through the bottom of the uh, truck here. As you can tell, they're coming up. Now what I wanna do is I wanna hide these wires. So I want it to look clean. I don't want it to be just kind of sitting out and look kind of like a hack job. Um, I take pride in everything that I do and I like to make everything look as factory as possible. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna run the negative to the cable itself and I'm gonna install an eyelet to make it look fairly normal. And then I'm actually going to move the battery box. There's a bolt here and a bolt here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these bolts and then I'm actually gonna run the positive wire up behind here and then through the firewall inside the truck where the harness is so that way I can have power and then have my ground attached here. Now, um, I have two batteries, one for accessory and one for power. So I gotta make sure that I know which one's which. Um, I do know that this battery in particular is powered for the truck, the other is my accessory battery. So technically I could run it to the accessory battery, however it is closer here, less wiring, a little bit less of a hassle, and I don't have to run a whole bunch of wire around the truck to go inside the truck. There's actually a um, firewall insert for the OE wires that I'm gonna use. I'm actually gonna untape those run the wire through and then tape it all back up. So like I said, it looks factory, looks clean. Um, that way I'm not doing anything to jeopardize drilling holes and anything or anything like that. So I'm gonna get down to it.
It looks like we took out the battery. Yeah. Where'd it go? The, uh, I'm gonna be putting everything back together and it's blurry there. Give it a second to refocus, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna be putting the battery back in and putting the bolts back in, and then I'm gonna run the positive wire into the cab so that way I can get moving on this. All right, guys, so what I've been doing is I just ran the positive wire right here for the light bar itself, and as you can see, there's a little rubber fitting here that leads right behind the dash, so I popped a little hole in it. Um, I used a Phillips head screwdriver to poke the hole, and the reason I did that rather than drilling a hole is because as you can see, it's got the crosshairs on it. So once I poke the hole, it'll actually flat back into itself. And that way it'll actually keep that seal around the wire. So that way I'm not just poking a hole through something and it doesn't seal and then I run the risk of getting water or something else in there. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna run the negative wire. And the cool thing about the Ford harness that I got is um, there's a piece of tape around the actual harness itself. And if you pull that piece of tape off or if you pull the wires through the tape so that it stays on, totally up to you. Uh, it labels each auxiliary. So auxiliary one is yellow. I believe auxiliary two is brown and green. And auxiliary three it's violet. was violet and violet and brown. That's what it was, something like that. And, um, auxiliary four was just brown. And uh, the fourth auxiliary was either green or brown. I can't remember. But if you look on the harness itself, it comes directly off the fuse box, um, you'll see four little wires that are kind of taped together right by the fuse box or relay box there, and it'll have those labels on there. So don't throw that away if you if you haven't already. If you have, go look for it because that's gonna tell you what colors the wires that we've got. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the ground now, and then we're gonna go ahead and test the light bar and see if it works. So these are the quick releases I was telling you about. So the reason I went ahead and did this is because I like to be able to remove this if I have any issues or if I want to readjust it or anything like that. All I have to do is come in here and pull these out and then I can pull the light bar off. And that way I don't have to go through and rewire everything and, and run the wires and do all this and do all that. It's just a plug and play. Video for exactly. How to rewire your light bar. So I'm just running them right next to the wiring harness running the wires over here behind this portion of the um, weather stripping, pulling them through the rubber fitting, and then I'm actually gonna feed the negative now through here, so that way I can be able to um, ground it out and get everything going. Okay guys, so what I'm doing here is I went out and I had actually had Angel go out and get some eyelets for me, because uh, I didn't have any. Um, so as you'll notice though, there's no covering on these. Uh, what I do is I actually like to take the plastic covering off and crimp them myself. And then what I'll do is I actually slide some weather stripping over the wire before crimping them down. That way I can actually slide the weather stripping the correct size over the metal portion of it and heat shrink it down. If the plastic's on there, it usually never fits. You have to go to the next size up which then if you're running a smaller gauge wire like this doesn't really work because it's not gonna shrink around the wire enough to create that seal. So that's why I take the plastic off so that way I can crimp it over and have a correct seal and that way I don't run the risk of getting any water or anything like that inside the wire and run the risk of corrosion or shorting something out. Because that would suck and not be bad. Voila! 
It is complete. <laughs> Survival of their species remains in existence. My goodness, this nature now is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, what a vicious group. Has their main team process finished? Oh, it looks like they're struggling. I almost got you to the face. Well, one more for good measure. about you, you rip off Pikachu. Back to the action. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Fire. It's almost like I can feel it. It smells great. Let's try not to get struck on fire. Let that dry for a minute. Remember everybody, that could be very, very hot, so make sure to protect yourself. John, why don't you explain to the people at home what you're doing now? What I'm doing now is I am... Taking. No, you must say it's an accent. What I am doing now is I am taking the ground wire and I'm securing it to the negative battery cable to create ground. Because without ground you get no power. You get no power, you get no lights. You get no lights, you get no blind people. And if you have no Adidas stripes, you get no women. This is right. Like I'm not me? sure if you were going Russian or German, now I'm confused. I was going both. I am German Russian. German Russian? It's almost like being from Michigan. Question for you, where where from Michigan are you from? Show the people on your hand where are you from, because that's a thing apparently. No, I lied. It's this way. It's this it's way? this way. I am from right here. You're from right there? Hold on. I think I lied. Don't show that. That was bad. That was bad? We're that still gonna show it. Uh, no, you're not. Yes, we are. Because in Soviet, we always show everything. Okay, so I am from right here. Now, where is the other side? Is that Canada? When you had it the other way like this? Uh, yeah, that's as if you were looking from underground. Which some of you might be, because I know you're in hiding. But it's okay because you're watching our YouTube. So John, you've disconnected back to the terminal and went ahead and inserted ground. 
Because now we need power for light bar. Yes. What? Oh, we love butts. Is that some Soviet weather sniffing you have there? No, it's American. It's American. The Come moment on. of truth. John, right. how many hours of work have we put in this so far? Quite a few. I honestly have no idea. I don't have Are you gonna cry if this doesn't work? Probably. Probably. Well, so but far? I have faith in myself and I love wiring and it is my specialty. Oh, by the way guys, before I do this, if you guys have any questions about wiring or anything like that, feel free to hit me up or Angel. Um, I well, love, comment it below in the description. I love I love wiring. Um, it's really super simple. If you guys don't understand something, feel free to comment. Uh, hit a, hit one of us up, any of that, and uh, I'd be happy, more than happy to go through it with you guys. Um, moment of truth, we're going to see if this works. Um, I ended up wiring the uh, light bar into auxiliary one, and then the 22 inch in the front to auxiliary two. I'm saving auxiliary three and auxiliary four. Um, I'm going to put my fog lights as auxiliary three because I don't have the harness for it, so I'm going to buy the pigtails eventually and then splice into the pigtails for auxiliary three. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with auxiliary four yet, so we'll see. But um, yeah, moment of truth, here we go. We're gonna see if this thing lights up. Oh, it starts. Slow That's good. Oh my God. All right. All right. Auxiliary one. And lift off again. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Alrighty guys, well we're done. We got it, everything works correctly. Um, for right now. For now. Don't, don't say it. Don't say that. <laughs> no, <that's>, don't. Because <laughs> I'm already going to have to take it off and get a new windshield. That is going to be a pain, but at least you know you did a good job. Well, and I've got to do it anyways, because remember we have to replace all the bolts so we can get the correct bolts in there, because we did put the washers and stuff. That's very true. So I'm going to have to remove it anyways, so. At least you'll be able to enjoy some awesome high beam action for those lovely Hondas that think they can cut in front of you. It's going to be lit. I think we already told that joke. But anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to pull this baby out and give her a quick wash. She's a little dirty. She deserves a lot of love and she's been a good girl. But uh, yeah, this has been a great video. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have questions, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, we need you. If you already have hit the subscribe button, just know that we're going to be doing a giveaway at around 1,000 followers. Once we get our 1,000 followers, we're doing a grand prize giveaway, probably, you know, a coupon or a gift card or something like that. On a bunch something that will benefit you in one way or another for doing something completely free. But so, the big thing, though, is all the items that we did go ahead and use in this video as far as the fog light bezels, the actual fog lights, where they can get the light bar, where they can go and get the mounts. Everything that needs to be bought for this besides the tools, we'll have a link in the description below. Um, so that way you guys can actually see exactly what we use. So that way, if you're wanting to do this exact same thing, we got you covered. Yeah, so I will let you know what size light bar it is that I have on the top. Um, what size will fit with the brackets that I used, as well as the OE bracket installation uh, for the F250s and then where I got my 22 inch, as well as the part numbers for the switches, the harness, um, the fog lights, the fog light bezels. Now, I won't have the part numbers for the um, fog light harness, uh, but we will do another short video on that once I get those. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching guys. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Um, Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your family friends, everybody. Tell your lovers. Um, oh, all the time, all the time. Don't hide this stuff from them. They'll, they'll want to see this. 
So, I mean, it's, it's really bad to hide things. Just let you know. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, look for more content. Hit that subscribe button. We need you, and we love you. And yeah. Yeah, we want to quit our day jobs, guys. So, you're helping us out with that. But uh, I think in the meanwhile, John, uh, I'm going to go ahead and find some Switch stems. And now I'm going to pull this truck out and we're going to go wash it. Woo! See you later.